Mike Tomlin is going to be back for another season, people. And, you know, everybody was saying Steeler fans were idiotic to ever get mad about Mike Tomlin and say that he needs to get fired. Like, the dude has never had a winning season. And it's so funny how ESPN is so quick to post that statistic about Mike Tomlin always having consecutive winning seasons, but they never post that graphic about how long it's been since he last, he last won a playoff game in Pittsburgh. And you see, when it comes to Mike Tomlin and his job performance with the Pittsburgh Steelers, a lot of people in the national media seem so fixated on handing out participation trophies. You see, Mike Tomlin never having a losing season is definitely a huge achievement, and I'm not going to undermine that. I always give Mike Tomlin the respect and credit he deserves for doing that because having a winning season every year is something that a lot of fans who root for bad teams wish their head coach could do on his worst season. You feel me? So if you can consistently go 9-8, and 9-8, and eight, win 10 games occasionally, you're a really good football coach. That means that there's something in your coaching philosophy that you do that is sustainable and it works if you never are able to have a losing season. But you see, here's the problem that Steeler fans have, that the national media and people who aren't Steeler fans or don't root for the team or always make excuses for Mike Tomlin seem to not register. Never having a losing season isn't the equivalent to hoisting a Lombardi trophy. What does never having a losing season do? Like, honestly, okay, cool. You won nine games. You went to the playoffs. You got your ass kicked. Cool. You win 10 games the following season. You go to the playoffs and you lose again. What's the point of going to the playoffs just to always lose? You feel me? Eventually, when does the goal get back to what it used to be? Competing for championships every single season. You see... The national media always loves to rally and give participation trophies, right? But nobody likes to talk about how the standard in Pittsburgh has went down. This used to be a gold standard organization. This used to be a championship franchise that Super Bowl or bust was the expectation every single season for Pittsburgh. And ever since they lost to Aaron Rodgers, the expectations have went down. Pittsburgh had two of maybe the greatest skilled position players at their positions of the past decade at dinner winning Super Bowl with them. Antonio Brown and Le'Veon Bell. You remember the Killer Bees? Hell, Big Ben was in his prime, and the only thing Mike Tomlin had to show for that talent was getting blown the hell out in the AFC Championship by the New England Patriots. Oh, well, it's not Mike Tomlin's fault the team is never good. Um, Mike Tomlin specializes in defensive back play, right? Wasn't he like a secondary coach when he was coming up? So why is it that the Steelers haven't had a good secondary since I've been watching this team play? The last time I remember this secondary actually being good was a very long time ago. The linebacker play is never really that great. There hasn't been great linebacker play since Ryan Shazier played. You see, the defense has not been that great for Pittsburgh as People make it out to be. And the reason for that isn't because Mike Tomlin has a lack of talent. He has three of arguably the best players at their respective positions in the NFL. Cam Hayward at DT. You got TJ Watt, arguably the best pass rusher in the league. And Mika Fitzpatrick, arguably the best safety in the league. What more talent do you need? And it's really naive to think that Mike Tomlin doesn't have a say in what players get added on to this roster when he's been with this team as long as what he has been. If he wants a player, they're going to go out and get a player. All right? You see, Mike Tomlin defenders always want to deflect the blame on somebody else other than the problem itself, that being Mike Tomlin. There was no excuse for the Steelers to lose to the Jacksonville Jaguars at home in the divisional round that year. And I will never get over that. And I will never forgive Mike Tomlin for that. That was an unforgivable loss. You let the Jaguars with Blake Bortles and Leonard Fournette roll over you again? Again? Remember the first time they played Big Ben? Damn, they retired because of that. With how bad he played in that game. And then you lose to an interim head coach? 
during the COVID year? Like, a lot of people never talk about that when it comes to Mike Tomlin. Nobody ever talks about that loss to the Cleveland Browns. An uh, interim head coach, Baker Mayfield? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? And if you want to take it back even further, I remember when the Steelers lost to Tim Tebow with that ugly ass, slow behind throwing motion. Those are dark to Demarius Thomas. He's darting up the sidelines since the Steelers packing the Kukon. I mean, Mike Tomlin is a good coach. But let's stop acting like he's a, a great coach. All right? And when it comes to the Steelers moving on from Mike Tomlin, this is what's messed up about it. All right? If Mike Tomlin had a quarterback, like a really good quarterback, I wouldn't have no problem with him remaining the head coach. But you see, the Steelers don't have a great quarterback situation right now. And are they ever going to improve that? I don't know because I don't trust this franchise to be able to do it. Like, I listened to a game when the announcer said that they talked to Mike Tomlin during the post-game or the preparation interviews and stuff for the game, right? The production interviews that they do. And he said that, he went with Mitch Trubisky because he had experience being a franchise quarterback in the past. Like, that alarmed me. And with Mike Tomlin saying that, it didn't surprise me because look at who they drafted in the first round a couple of years ago. Kenny Pickett. So, the fact that Mike Tomlin is a defensive-minded coach but doesn't know how to find a good quarterback is why he continues to come up short in the playoffs. You see, Mason Rudolph played okay against the Buffalo Bills. He played good enough to be better than to be starting over Kenny, that's for sure. But being better than Kenny Pickett isn't that big of a bragging right. You know, like the Steelers need to go out there and need to get an actual quarterback in the draft, like a Kayla Williams or a Drake May. But guess what? The Steelers will never be able to do that. You want to know why? Because Mr. Never Has a Losing Season is so damn good as a coach that he's going to F you over when it comes to draft position because you're never going to be bad enough to get a premium quarterback in the draft. So you're always stuck with the boom or bust players or the average at best players at quarterback when it's your time to pick. And that's the problem with Mike Tomlin. You're not winning championships with him, but you're not losing enough to help solve the biggest issue with this team, the lack of good quarterback play. And you got a head coach that doesn't know what the hell he's doing. Like, listen, I like Mike Tomlin. I really do, and I really don't want to get see him coach anywhere else other than Pittsburgh, only because, I'm going to be honest with you, especially if you're a Steelers fan like me, I'm scared to dream about what life is post-Mike Tomlin. You see, a lot of Steelers fans make the idea of moving on from Mike Tomlin sound so great. And it does sound great at times, until you think about this, the grass isn't always greener, on the other side. And it's really hard to find a head coach who at worst is going to be 9-8. and eight. Do you know how good that is? But at the same time, there also has to be a coach who can get the Steelers over the top. So is it a necessary risk that I think the Steelers should take eventually? Give Mike Tomlin two more seasons to get this right. I'm willing to give him that because this dude is an outstanding coach. All right? And that's never been my problem with Mike Tomlin. I've always given him props for being a good coach. My problem is that he has plateaued in Pittsburgh. That's my biggest problem with Mike Tomlin. All right? And my reasoning for wanting Mike Tomlin fired is simply for the fact that I want the standard to go back to what it used to be. Is that so outrageous? I got to be called an Uncle Tom for just wanting the Steelers to get back to competing for Super Bowls, not being okay with going 9-8 and every season? What's so wrong about me wanting that as a fan? Don't you not want the same for your team? You see, like, that's what ESPN never talks about, how the Steelers have been stagnant under Mike Tomlin. Yes, we know that this dude can do more with less, but part of the roster not being up to par is his doing. Like, Artie Burns was a cornerback in the first round. He was a bust. They drafted Terrell Edmonds. Over Lamar Jackson. As a Steeler fan, I would never get over that. Because I wanted Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson was drafted by the Baltimore Ravens, which makes it even more worse for me. Every time I see Lamar play, I always think to myself, bro, like, we drafted Terrell Edmonds over you. How much of a fool we were to do that? So it's just like, the Steelers, 
do a really good job at drafting, but some of their draft picks when it comes to players in the defensive back in the first round have been awful. Like, Artie Burns? Yeah, he definitely lived up to his last name because he got burned hell of a lot. Like, the Pittsburgh Steelers, I'm okay with Mike Tomlin coming back for another season. But I do feel like he needs to be on the clock. He needs at least two more seasons to prove that he can get the Steelers to at least the divisional round or the conference championship game. Because eventually, like, you got to get tired of tolerating complacency. And it's funny because Mike Thomas always talks about not being okay with mediocrity and complacency, but that's all the Steelers have been the past decade under him. So when, when it comes to how the national media views Mike Tomlin and how Steeler fans who want him fire view Mike Tomlin, I always disagree with the narrative that the Steeler fans who want Mike Tomlin fired are wrong and they don't know what they're talking about because they do have a point. And I sometimes flip between the fire Mike Tomlin minority and the keep Mike Tomlin minority because this dude still is a really good coach. You can't deny the fact that your worst is losing eight games and still having nine wins, still being in playoff contention, that's impressive. But at the same time, what's the point of that when you don't get anything out of it if you're just going to lose in the playoffs? So that's really my thoughts on Mike Tomlin. You know, you guys let me know how you guys feel about him down in the comment section down below. But I, I just get a little bit annoyed when people always defend Mike Tomlin like he, he can do no wrong. Like there are some valid criticisms to wanting him to be out of Pittsburgh. You know, some I agree with, some I disagree with. Like, I still lie in the middle of how I feel about Mike Tom. I love the brother as a head coach. I love what he does for the locker room. A lot of the players mess with him. It's just that his defenses aren't always great, and his defenses never stop elite quarterbacks in the playoffs. Like, when's the last time Mike Tomlin ever had an elite defense that stopped the elite quarterback? Like, Josh Allen normally throws the, throws the ball to the other team every game he plays in. No turnovers against Pittsburgh, though. 